he will, let's say, stay in the realm of scaling, but also combine it now with relevance and give us an introduction to setfit, a practical approach for few shot learning. So please welcome Fernando on stage. So uh, today I'm here to share some experience that we had doing uh, fine tuning with few shot uh, learning. And we use this new technique, which is set fit. And I hope it can be helpful for everyone. And maybe if you, someone can have some insights to replicate this kind of experiment in your own uh, use cases. So a bit about me, I am uh, Fernando, CEO of N2VEC. I have a PhD in natural language processing. And I also has have some experience with uh, in the market too. So I, I work with, with uh, R and D and NLP for a while, and well, n 2 vec is a startup, and we developed a search API for documents or knowledge database, especially for companies, uh, private documents, and, and a, a few other cases. Uh, we use vector databases. We use Bird for searching and ranking, and we are based uh, near São Paulo in Brazil. Um, just to very, very summary of our product, just to let everybody know. Uh, our API basically is used by companies that want to uh, search, do search in, inside documents. So basically they upload documents that may be PDFs, maybe PowerPoint, maybe uh, docs into our engine. We generate the embeddings, save into the vector database and also relational database in some cases. And uh, we also have an entry point for uh, searching on uh, this database with the most relevant documents. I so uh, this way we are, we kind of bridge the this technology to the to the end customer. Usually, those clients they don't have uh, technical personnel in search and they want to do searching documents. So we provide them our API and we also provide services for customizing our for uh, integrating with their in internal systems. Uh, well, but today we are going to handle a, a very classical problem of pretty much 99% of the people in machine learning, which is handling data with few labels. So, and then Satfit came up for trying to solve this problem, right? Uh, the idea is that it can do a few shot fine tuning of sentence transformers. And they promise to present competitive results compared to GPT and others. And they also promise to be, uh, promise to be light and fast to train. And one of the presentations that the authors uh, uh, told about the, the, this technology, they used to say that you can train in your laptop. And it's kind of true. And it also has uh, multilingual support. So basically, this is the paper. I will have the reference here. I may share with you guys in on Slack too. It was developed as a joint effort with, from uh, Hugging Face, uh, Cohere, and the Technical University of Darmstadt and Intel Labs. Uh, basically, this is set fit. It's divided in two pieces. It's used for text classification. Okay, It's still not for uh, relevance ranking, but I'm going to explain a little bit how it links. And uh, so in the first part, it's consisted by uh, the sentence transformer fine tuning, which will be uh, consist considering that uh, you take a few shot training data, which is a very small amount of data that is labeled, and you generate sentence pairs. And after that, you fine tune it, pre train it, sentence transformer. You can grab like something from uh, hugging face, for example, and fine tune it. And this is the first part, right? So let, let me uh, dive a little bit deeper into the first part before I go to the second part. So uh, the generate sentence pairs consists of taking uh, original data. So suppose I have this uh, small data set when I have sentences and the categories. Uh, what we're going to do is generate triplets in which um, you, I will take two 
uh, each pair of uh, random pairs of sentences from the same category, and I will label as one as as if they are similar. And I also going to generate negative triplets, and these triplets are be the, are going to be the opposite. I will take two uh, sentences from different categories. So for, for example, I got this sentence from here and I got this another sentence from here and I marked it as zero. And with that, we can generate up to uh, K times K minus one divided by two um, samples from the original data, which is much bigger than just K samples. So with these triplets, we can train, we can fine tune a sentence transformer. Uh, so the sentence transformer will basically take as input two different sentences, pass it into a BERT, lay to BERT layers, and pooling layer, and at the end, there are gonna be two different, uh, two different uh, uh, word embeddings for each of the sentence. And the nice thing is that there is gonna be um, the last function is going to be a custom similarity, such as it's kind of learning to produce embeddings that are comparable using constant similarity, which is going to be very useful for us later to store in, into a uh, vector database and do uh, search using constant similarity. Uh, so this is the first part. So once we fine tune it, what we can do is encode the original sentences from the from the whole data sets that is going to be classified. And then we, we're going to have the this, this sentence embeddings for them. And, for, and with the sentence embeddings, we can simply train our, our ordinary uh, classifier algorithm. So these are the results that they have from the benchmarks. So you, we can see here that in the first benchmark, Set fit got 62.3% of in the average. Oh, and do each column is a different uh, text classification problem. So uh, in the in the average, it set fit got 62.3%, uh, which is just 1% below the best result. But when you increase this number of samples for for fine tuning. Set fit got the best results. So this is very interesting. And uh, in another benchmark, set fit could even beat GPT-3, even though there, is, there are a, a much smaller number of parameters. So when we, when we saw that, we thought, OK, so it's very interesting. How could we actually use it for uh, search relevance? So we had a problem at NTVEC, which is uh, doing legal research. And in legal research, uh, it's very important because uh, good precedents can lead to more chances to win for the lawyer, more chances to win cases. But it's a very dense content. The text is very complicated. And because of that, most of the lawyers say that it uh, legal research takes most of their time and also it's the hardest task on their duties. And our legal research database is consisting by more than 60 million sentences extracted from legal decisions, which were extracted from precedents from eight different courts in Brazil. And from those data, from this data, we got uh, a little bit more than 7.8 thousand results annotated by lawyers using our application. And we started doing set feed. So how we did that? The first step, we noted that from our whole data set, there was a small fraction that was already uh, labeled from the courts. So when we retrieved the data from the courts, they already had some labels indicating the team, but uh, there, there were too many classes with too few labels each. So in other words, we had like 
9,000 samples split in 138 classes. So it's a very small number of, of uh, uh, samples per class. So the first thing we did, so, oh, okay. So this is another, this is an example uh, of how are, how is the text? How is the, how are the sentences that we extracted? So uh, this is not, it's basically, I just try to translate it, but actually I would be, I would have to be a, a lawyer in an English speaking country to have a, a very, very correct translation because there are so many terms that vary according to the country. But I can give you guys an idea of how different are the texts. And so what we did was from this text, we generate the triplets. And with the triplets, we uh, finely tune it our sentence transformer. And again, we just use it a, a pre trained model from Hungry Face. And then we got our finely tuned sentence transformer. And once we had it, we simply use it, trained our classifier, and then we got our uh, classifier for uh, legal teams. Okay, so this is, was just one first step. Oh, what is the relation of that with relevance ranking? For now, nothing. <laughs> but there is a subproduct which is our fine-tuned sentence transformer, and then we get this fine-tuned sentence transformer, which already knows, kind of knows the teams in the, knows to differentiate teams uh, in the legal domain right so now we went to the second step we got those uh, data that were annotated by lawyers which are consist considering basically triplets of question uh, answers or results and indication whether they are relevant or not like these ones and then we did a second round of fine tuning. So we got, instead of picking the Hugging Face original model, we got our fine tuning model from our team classifier. We applied our triplets and we augmented it using negative triplets that we have generated in the same way that we generated in the past for the classifier. Uh, in other words, we mix it uh, a question with a result from another uh, from another question and mark it as negative. So we could augment the data set and we fine tune it our sentence transformer again. And at the end, we get our second fine tuned sentence transformer. So not so that I came from something very general from Hugging Face. I then uh, fine tune it for my domain, which was kind of classified in teams. And at the end, I fine tune it again for my problem with question and answers from the legal domain. And then from that, I wanted to implement a search and ranking using an ordinary pipeline, which I basically wanted to get a search query and collect the 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 candidates using the, the sentence transformer and then use these candidates and pass to the ranker using a cross encoder like Joe brilliantly presented yesterday. And that's what I, we wanted to do. So what we did we got our search query. We encoded it using our our late, latest fine tuned model. And then we queried the samples from the vector database. And this is a very nice part because I can, um, as I said, I have uh, millions of records. So I could start in, into the database. And as the embeddings is stored in the database are very, very relevant for me, when I do a cosine similarity search, I get very good candidates. And then I just pass those candidates to our cross encoder and I do the rank. So at the end, I I, I have compared um, for, 
for this for this problem, I had to kind of define my own metric, which is uh, we wanted to know how many questions I could find a good result in at most five the top five results, because my problem here is not necessarily to uh, sell a product or something. I want to give the lawyer um, a nice result as fast as possible. I mean, uh, most most closer to the closest to the top, because each result is going to lead to a document, and the lawyer has to read the document and takes time. So I don't want to make the lawyer to read a lot of things that are irrelevant. Okay, so uh, in this case, my my metric was how many questions I can answer. At, with at least one good result in the top five. And with an, with the common pipeline, which was a sentence transformer uh, extracted from uh, Hugging Face and the Crossing Polder, I got 79% of the questions answered in the top five with at least one relevant result. And when I look at the, all of the answers from the top five, I got 42% uh, relevant answers from the top five. But when I applied the fine tune it, I got to 86%. So at the end, uh, this technique was able to improve by 7% the number of queries in which I could give a relevant result in the top five. So what we learned from that is that um, something that was already mentioned I think in the last year, uh, Haystack conference, Joe mentioned also, and I think uh, it's very important to do fine tuning. And in our case, we had very little data to be to to actually fine tune. There were very few labels, and SetFit was very helpful for us for uh, augmenting this data and being able to uh, do a fine tuning that increase uh, by seven percent. And seven percent is a very interesting number for us. It can save a lot of hours from, from the lawyers that use our system. So just want to give you an acknowledgement here just to thank FAPESP, which is one of a uh, scientific agency in Brazil that funds our research work and our NTVEC team that work together for presenting uh, this solution. So that's it. I think I had to accelerate a little bit. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. That's okay. Are there any questions in the audience? Yes. Hi, thanks so much for the nice talk. Um, I saw your whole workflow is um, pretty much centered around sentences. Um, while I would think that lawyers are probably not uh, aiming for finding a sentence, but more, let's say, phrases or paragraphs like coherent passages um did you notice or did you think about that and also did you maybe notice that your fine tuning might help with this because the cross encoder maybe could somehow find let's say, more depending um sentences uh good question actually this is something we uh work a lot actually we are doing yes we're doing sentences but in our final application, what we do is actually we present the lawyer to a, sent a sentence that is relevant and we give a link to the original document. So kind of abstract that, but I completely understand. The one problem that we have that we are trying to figure out is uh, maybe uh, uh, the result came from different sentences, but hopefully there's gonna be something that we solve to, to bring to the next haystack perhaps. <laughs> Thanks. We have one question from our online audience. Um, so how many pairs of queries and results did you have to label for fine tuning in the relevant stage or was this extracted from usage logs? Uh, we, a, a small part was labeled, but most of them were extracted from uh, user logs. But in, in, the, in our application, we had a, a button to cite. So when the when the lawyer clicked at cite, it was because it was actually making a citation to the 
to the content to the document and then we knew that it was used it. That was it. questions from our live audience so we have another one from online so let me ask that while i go over to you um, do you have any tricks or have you applied any tricks in your negative sampling while fine-tuning? A very good question. I had not applied any trick, but I am aware that there is going to be room for applying tricks. Uh, a problem that I am aware and that I would like to share is that I cannot guarantee that uh, something that I marked as Irrelevant in my data augmentation, the second step would not be actually relevant to another another question. For example, I take the risk of having two similar questions, and an answer from the for the for the second question being actually uh, relevant for the first question too. I know I'm taking this risk, but that's uh, uh, that's a kind of issue that I can also work. And if if anybody has a similar situation, I I recommend to think about it also. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the great talk. I have one question regarding using uh, uh, language models in this way, because on a use case like uh, uh, low, low data, you're expecting very high precision. On the other hand, we know that embeddings with language models can bring in some bias. Did you see this pose some issues? Maybe the fine tuning mitigates it? Or have you tried other ways to check and maybe avoid language model bias in such a system? Uh, good question. Still didn't, when you mention large language, large language models, you're talking about Yama, GPT, and things like that, or, or BERT also, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, we, we, we use it, uh, the sentence transformer actually is, was trained using BERT, so kind of already using it, but, um, we didn't see any specific issue because we see an, a, a very interesting uh, increase in the results. So I think, I, I don't think there's going to be an issue, but for sure we should study a little bit more, yeah, perhaps. I can guarantee. <laughs> Another online question. Did you do a comparison of your model with simple BM25? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Can you um, uh, explain again how why did you use the first simple like fine tunes um, uh, transformer? Um, I mean, why why I? Yeah, so to... so you said that you um, like predicted predicted teams. Or yeah, what was this used for? Um, the reason is that, oops, just getting back. Uh, we had a, actually the, the point is that we, we noted that, okay, let me go a little bit back. Um, we wanted to, uh, have at the end, the point is we wanted to have a nice embedding representation into our vector database, such as we could do a search and it would give us relevant results to minimize the number of samples to input to the to the cross encoder because the cross encoder is quite slow and what are the solution for that we could generate um use sentence transformer to generate the embeddings uh and store those embeddings into the vector database but to do that the the embeddings should be a should be able to be compared using the cosine similarity and then that's why the sentence transformer can learn it with using uh, cosine similarity as the last loss function. Uh, but the problem is there are a lot of um, pre-trained sentence transformer models on hugging face, for example, but they are very general. They are multi-language. Uh, I am working with Portuguese. I And I'm working with law uh, domain, which is very, very complex. Sometimes we read legal decisions and we don't understand anything that is written there. So uh, we know that we needed to do some fine tuning. So that was all, all the way to this point. And, but we did not have enough data to do a fine tuning at the point. So where did we find the, 
the uh, a nice amount of data of legal data in Portuguese to do fine tuning. Then we came to this that kind of uh, felt from the heaven, <laughs> which uh, was a many, which we noted that many of the decisions from the court were already labeled because someone that works in the court goes there and say, oh, this decision is related to traffic accident, for example. And then we used that, we extracted the sentences, and then everything started. We did the fine tuning. And then once we start do this first fine tuning, then we were able to do the second fine tuning with the search and results triplet. Uh, okay, <laughs> I mean, um, okay, so I understand that you were able to fine tune uh, this first sentence transformer, um, but then like, okay, so at the end, what it can uh, uh, predict is basically this like, why, yeah, traffic accident and so on, right? Yes. Yes. And uh, like, um, is it uh, somehow used as a feature or whatever for the second trans sentence transformer? You or like no. that was my question. No, no, no. Or is good, it just good like... no good question because, uh, yeah, we we did the classifier right, but the classifier was actually another thing that we wanted to put as a feature in our application. So, from from this uh, talk, we actually remove everything and get only the finitude and model <laughs> basically. I don't know if it was clear because the classifier, it's the classifier by itself, it was not used for searching. Yeah, it was not used. But the fine tuned model that was used for generating embeddings, this one we could take advantage of. Ah, so you continue to uh, fine tune it? Yes. Ah, okay. I, I, didn't get so that. I got okay, this. Oops. And I used this, you know, the, the model that I used for the classifier, I, I brought it back here. And then I fine tune it again. Use it using the triplets from that were annotated by the lawyers. So two phases. I know it's confusing, <laughs> but it good get us good results. So let's thank Fernando once again for his talk.